Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Virtual National Fossil Day with the Alabama Museum of Natural History. Give me just a second. I want to make sure that we are streaming in all of the places that we should be streaming in, which I think that we are, but I want to make sure. Yes, looks like we're good. All right, so uh, I would like to welcome everyone back again to Virtual National Fossil Day. If you're joining us for the first time today, make sure to look back at the videos that we recorded earlier. You can find all of them archived on whatever platform you're watching on right now. So if you are watching on uh, our YouTube channel, they're all archived there. And if you were watching on any of our Facebook pages that we're streaming to, all of those will be archived there as well. Um, so make sure to go back and watch all the videos we did today. There's been some incredible things. Let me pop up the schedule so you guys can see um, what we've had going on today. It's been a great day. Do you guys see the schedule? It was, it's been a really good day. Um, so uh, make sure you get to see all of that. Um, this is our final presentation for National Fossil Day. And we are um, joined today by uh, Dr. Adiel Klompmaker by Ashley Allen, and we weren't able to be joined today, but um, as a part of this is Dr. James Lamb. Um, if you guys wouldn't mind, would you uh, just mind introducing yourself just a little bit? So Dr. Klotmaker, where do you work? What's your title? Um, just let us get to know you for a second. Hello, everyone. I'm the curator of paleontology at the University of Alabama Museums. And what about you, Ashley? Hi, I'm Ashley Allen. I am president of the Alabama Paleontological Society. And again, we weren't able to be joined by uh, Dr. James Lamb, but he is a representative of the Birmingham Paleontology Paleontological Society, and he is at the University of West Alabama. Um, so today is a very special and very exciting day. This is the first time this has happened. Um, we are, this is the first time um, we've had an award like this or a presentation like this, and um, we're excited to get to it. So. The um, Alabama Avocational Paleontolo or Paleontologist Award is what we're here to present today. And I was wondering if Dr. Klotmaker, Dr. Klotmaker, if you could tell me a little bit about this award. What is it and why was it needed? Yeah, this is a, uh, an award to celebrate the vast contributions of avocational or amateur paleontology, paleontologists in the state of Alabama. I've been working here at UA for uh, almost a year now, and I've seen a tremendous amount of efforts educational paleontologists have been putting into their hobby. Uh, for example, they collect lots of fossils, they prepare fossils, they donate fossils to museums, so researchers in Alabama and all over the world can use them. Uh, they are also very active in outreach events uh, throughout the year. They've been helping out with uh, National Fossil Day and the ALMNH in the past and are doing it right now as well. Some uh, avocational paleontologists have been writing about their fossils, either uh, popular stories or sometimes even scientific stories. Some of the specimens they've collected end up in museum collections uh, all across the state in several museums, and they are being actively used for scientific research. And even some of them actually have been used to erect new species that were not known from the fossil record so far. Some members uh, are also very active with uh, helping to preserve fossil sites in the state, and we'll get to that a bit la later on. Um, there are two societies in the state of Alabama that focus on paleontology, which are the Alabama Paleontological Society. Uh, Ashley Allen is here as the pre president, and also the Birmingham Paleontological Society, and they've been active for many years. They, they have strong connections with uh, a paid paleontologist, professional paleontologist. And um, in the last year of, I've been working here in Alabama, I've seen there's uh, such a great dynamic and so many people have been so active in putting their money and all their efforts into this. And uh, in my opinion, uh, they are not appreci appreciated as much as they could have been appreciated. So I thought this would be a, a great year to start the award, this annual award. That's wonderful. Um, you know, I, it brings me to, uh, and I, I, to be fair, I don't know if this, these are avocational paleontologists or not, but we've been asking people to share their fossil collections with us today. And we've had a couple people share some on Instagram. I want to show everyone these real quick. Let me get my um, screen up. Can you guys see my screen okay? Because Okay, great. So yes. we've had some really wonderful fossil collections that have been shared with us using the hashtag National Fossil Day and hashtag My Collection. Um, and they've all been... Uh, um, 
shared with us at UAMNH um, on Instagram, which is great. And to be fair, again, I don't know if these are uh, professional or avocational paleontologists, but either way, we're really appreciative of the uh, pictures that you've sent us and um, we want to thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, I think most of them are probably from avocational paleontologists because one point I want to make too here is that there are only about a dozen professional paleontologists in the state of Alabama, yet there are many, many dozens of avocational paleontologists in the state. And actually, Alan can, can comment on this way better than I do, probably. Well, uh, Alabama is one of the best places in the nation to collect fossils. And the unique thing about paleontology is it's it's one of the few fields where, where amateurs stand a chance to have a major impact on that field of study. And one of the things we seek to do with the Alabama Paleontological Society is sort of bridge the gap between the avocational community and the academic community. That's great. So, okay, so this award, what were, what are some of the criteria that go into this award? Yeah, there are five main criteria uh, that we've looked at, uh, some of which are mentioned already. It's collecting, preparing, and donating uh, specimens to museums, helping with outreach events, either um, on a variety of outreach events that different museums organize or within their own societies, right? It's, it's trying to help with bright up popular or scientific stories about fossils uh, from the state of Alabama. Helping to preserve fossil sites is a major one of them too. And also to promote collaboration between professionals and, and educational paleontologists. That sounds great. So it sounds like um, the presentation, I'm sorry, the award has been decided on by a committee. Is that right, Dr. Kortmaker? Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. So the committee of three people, uh, myself as a curator at the uh, UA Museums, and then one representative of each of the Alabama Paleontological Society, uh, and actually Alan in this case, president, and also one representative of the Birmingham Paleontological Society to get uh, to make sure that you know we cover as many people and consider as many people as we can, so we don't don't forget about anybody. Uh, upon deciding this award, and you know, we I have we have to say uh, there are many many very worthy people, and which is why we make it an annual award too, so it can be given each year to uh, very deserving people. Um, so yeah. All right, I I can't wait anymore. We've been talking about this this whole time. I think. Do you think it's time to do the award, the very first one? Absolutely. Okay, I can't wait anymore. Um, I think I'll. Let you take it, Dr. Klotmaker. Yeah. Who's the award going to this year? So the very first award will be going to uh, T. Prescott Atkinson. He is uh, coming up right now. Yay! Let me unmute him. Hang on. Oh, let me get him over here. Excuse me. There it is. Hi. Congratulations. And let me... Uh, Give you a big applause for the many things you've done for Alabama, pain, Alabama paleontology in general, and uh, will continue to do so, as my understanding. And as the winner, you get an official plaque uh, now virtually. But the next time we see each other in person, I will hand him to you personally. Oh wow! This is the uh, the award. Oh, that's beautiful. There we go. Now you can see it in full. I hope. That's a great play. It looks beautiful. Congratulations, Prescott. This is very exciting. Well, so, thank you very much. I am, I'm just thrilled. How um, how did the committee come to choosing uh, Prescott for this award this year? I'll give the award to Ashley Allen first here. Okay. <clears throat> well, uh, you know, we threw around, uh, uh, you know, basically we talked about the criteria, what, you know, what uh, what are we looking for in recipient, especially the inaugural recipient of this award? And there just there there was one name that was obvious. It, just, you know, it comes right to the to the front of the line. And uh, when we look at you know your entire body of work from you know from the dinosaur egg found uh, in Dallas County to you know, all the incredible work you've done with uh, with preservation efforts at Union Chapel. Um, the, the discoveries out all of the insects that are found out there um just it, it was it was a really really clear choice 
Yeah, let me add to that. Uh, you know, we've known each other for only a year now, but Prescott has been finding and then donating already within a year thousands of fossils actually to the uh, ALM and H collection. And he has been donating specimens to other museums in the state and, and, and to other museums out of state as well, actually. Uh, he's very active with uh, going to the fields. Uh, he's been involved in some outreach events as well. He's been uh, working on popular and a number of scientific publications as well in the past. And we shouldn't forget that he has got uh, trace fossil species named after him uh, earlier this year, I believe it came officially in print. So there's, there's a variety of reasons as to why uh, for all the three committee members we came up with, uh, with your name Prescott. It's really impressive the amount of work you've been putting into it. And we should also mention, mention I lost the. Oh, I lost the. I know. I think. I, I think we might have lost. I think so. For a second. Well, Prescott, I hate to put you on the spot, but is there anything you'd like to say? Um, well, just uh, that I that uh, you know this is a great hobby uh, for adults and kids too, and um, Alabama is a great place for you know it has a wonderful geologic column with. Uh, rocks from all ages from the very earliest times when fossils are available to the you know to the most recent times the pleistocene when there were you know bison and uh, and uh, uh, mastodons and things like that stomping around the place so it's it's been it's a whole lot of fun and uh, preserving these things in museums I think is one of the one of the biggest thrills because uh, you know after the after the finder is long gone those things can hang around in the museum and and still give people a real thrill when they look at them and think about uh, ancient life from uh, days gone by uh, in the state. So uh, it's a lot of fun, and I really appreciate this uh, this award. It's it's just a real thrill. It sounds like it's well deserved. So congratulations again. I wish I had some sort of like fireworks graphic or something I could you know or party blower or something. So I'm so, just pretend that it's there. I'm gonna there. It's okay. yeah, spirit fingers for you. Congratulations. Absolutely. <laughs> Congratulations. And I, you know, I, I just, I can't say enough about him because, you know, he's been a great friend along the way, a uh, great personal friend, plus fantastic, uh, uh, um, you know, fellow in the field. As a matter of fact, most giants have come straight from his bucket. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's how good a fossil collector he is. <laughs> so I know that uh, we really appreciate. Yes. Oh, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was going to say we really appreciate you know, the totality of everything you do for, for paleontology in this state, from presentations to preservation efforts to, you know, collecting and finding new things to, you know, writing technical papers on these things. It's just, um, you know, you know this, this is a small way we can just say thank you for, for everything that you do in paleo. And, you know, just from, from the APS standpoint, uh, the incredible guest speakers you've been able to find for, we've been going at this thing for 18 years now, and you know, I am never disappointed. I, I, I don't know how you do it, just constantly finding tremendous guest speakers. And even in the face of a, of a global pandemic, we've still got great meetings going on. So thank you. Well, thanks, Ashley. That means a lot. So I know that I think both of you are, are both a vocational paleontologist. Am I right about that? How yes. how did you get into it? What what you know what got you started? How about, I guess uh, well, let's start with my, yeah. Let's start with Prescott. Yeah, I mean, my uh, in my case, um, uh, a, a friend of my uh, mother's gave her some shark's teeth when I was a kid, and uh, something about that just kind of set fire to my imagination. How about you, Ashley? What, what got you started in this? Well, I'd originally, uh, the summer before I went to uh, Livingston University, I went out collecting, uh, basically we were looking for pottery in the Chipola River in Florida. I found this broken little shark tooth. And I was, I was going to school at Livingston. And so the, uh, the, the dean of the school told me, said, you need to go talk to Richard Thurn. He's a geology professor here. And so mm -hmm. I took the tooth to Richard and showed him. I said, you know, this is, this is where I found it. 
And instead of just saying, oh, that's a that's a broken shark tooth. It's very common. Yeah, we throw those away when we find them. He could he, you know, he could have taken that approach, but instead he was, you know, uh, very encouraging. He said, oh, that's a fossil shark tooth. Tell me about where you found it. Tell me about this and that. And he said, you know, we got a lot of great fossils here in Alabama. Why don't you get out in the field with some other students and, and collect with them? And he constantly sort of fostered a, uh, a, a you know, a, a desire to go out in the field and, and find and discover more. And it kind of grew from there. That sounds like a great teacher. He was, definitely. We, we had the conversation with uh, Dr. Perez Huerta in our last, um, or Alberto in our last video. And he talked about how he didn't find fossils until college. And he, um, you know, he's the paleontologist now professionally, but he said he found out he had a professor that was just really into these, you know, brachiopods. And he thought, why are you into those? They seem so boring. But it was his passion and his enthusiasm for the subject that really, you know, ignited that, that, I don't know, got him, got the, the paleontology bug bit him there, I guess. <laughs> Fossil bug? I don't know. Maybe it can't bite you. But, um, but so that's, I think one of the things too that Adiel mentioned much earlier on today was that, uh, you know, paleontologists come in all shapes and sizes, right? In all different, um, so I didn't even think about it, but he said, if anyone is going out and, and you know, searching for fossils, they're a paleontologist. And I thought, oh, maybe that means I can call myself a paleontologist, which is kind of a great label to have. <laughs> Definitely not on par with you guys, but I can find a shark tooth every once in a while. Um, so um, how do avocational paleontologists and uh, academic paleontologists, how do they work together? They've sort of mentioned a little bit, but does anyone want to talk a little bit more about that relationship? Well, Ashley, this, this um, site that, uh, that, the, that our society was uh, uh, sort of instrumental in helping to preserve, Ashley actually found this site because a student of his um, had a, 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 actually his grandmother owned the coal mine. It's a surface coal mine, but it's the most productive uh, Paleozoic footprint site in the world. Um, and uh, Ashley uh, took the, took our group out and we started finding tracks pretty much immediately and then uh, realized that it was so important that we needed to try to get it preserved. And that was really our first uh, introduction to an effort, kind of a joint effort with uh, professionals to um, try to preserve an important fossil site here in, in Alabama. And we were successful and got the, got the, and the state, state uh, Department of Conservation, the State Lands uh, Division um, saw the importance of the site and took it under their protection. And it's uh, preserved today and still producing important specimens, um, uh, you know, to this day. Um, we still take uh, school classes and, and things like that out uh, to visit the site and, uh, and find really amazing stuff out there. Um, so that was our first introduction, but professionals and there are lots of examples of professionals and amateurs working together to, um, to, you know, um, find, preserve, and, uh, and, uh, you know, in, in museums and, and things like that, uh, important, uh, fossil specimens and, uh, in entire sites. Yeah, Adiel mentioned there's there's only about a dozen professional paleontologists in Alabama. Uh, I would have guessed it even lower than that, perhaps. But uh, but one of the things the amateurs can do, they can sort of be the eyes uh, of the professional community out in the field. Um, you know, especially if you know the amateur community is on the same page in terms of non-commercialization of, of sites and specimens. And um, you know, for example, a, a museum doesn't need all 20,000 exogyra that are, you know, laying out there in a, in a, in a uh, um, you know, in, in a chalk cut. But, um, but there are things out there that, that are important that an amateur may likely see, and they can, you know, bring that to the attention of the professional community and uh, work with the professional community in, in preserving the site and in collecting the material and, and, um, and you know, helping us learn more about uh, Alabama's past. Uh, oh, sounds like a, a, an important and, and strong relationship, which is kind of great. And I think it's maybe one that people don't think about too often. So it's part of the reason why this award, you know, becoming an annual thing is 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 so needed, I guess, is to shed light on that relationship and the importance of of everyone looking for things. I think I like what you said, too, because if there's only 12 max, we'll say right in the state, 
12 people can only be in so many places and only go so far, right? So the avocational community is able to, like you said, be the eyes, spread their efforts further on and, and get to, um, I guess, expand that that search um, for the, the mysteries of the past, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I have heard that there's a chance that maybe this award could um, like could spur an exhibit of some type, maybe at the museum. Is that right? Has there been talk about that? I think there's been talk about that. I think Adia will be the one to answer that question. Okay. But there has, has been talk about an exhibit featuring fossils from the uh, from avocational uh, um, paleontologist, and uh, I do not know the exact nature of you know the space that would take and so forth. But I think that that we're looking that direction. Let's say in the meantime, if you have any fossils uh, at home that you want to share with all of us, don't forget that you can share um, your collections with us uh, at, let me get this up so you guys can see it right there, using the hashtag National Fossil Day and the hashtag My Collection. And don't forget to tag us at UAMNH on both Twitter and Instagram. So in the meantime, when there's not uh, an exhibit up at the museum just yet for this, we have um, social media can help us along. <laughs> um, Yes. So let me see if we, so some of the comments have come in, a lot of congratulations for Prescott, which, you know, we absolutely agree with, and some um, avocational paleontologists of their own, um, Dinosaur Tooth, um, and, and even a young one, eight-year-old Alyssa, who's looking. So um, I think that's what one of my favorite things that you said, Prescott, is that paleontology is for all ages. You know, we, on our absolutely. summer trips, we um, have people from uh, age five years old on up, all the way up, that come in and are um, looking around and digging around and trying to find their fossils. And there's just something about, you never know what's there. There's something about that mystery that's hard to ignore um, and hard to uh, resist the call of, you know? <laughs> like, what am I going to find in this, you know? creek or this or you know chalk for formation or whatever like what am I going to find or this coal mine what am I going to find today I don't even know so it is an exciting an exciting field oh that's the beauty of it because you, you can do this for decades and decades and still when you go out right. to a site there's a very real not just a possibility there's a probability you're going to find something you haven't encountered before and that's that's really exciting there aren't a lot of hobbies that can offer that Right. Absolutely. I think, oh, hey, we've got Adiel back. Let's bring him back in. Hey, Adiel. Hi, everybody. Internet failed, but <laughs> glad to be back. Hey, it's live. Anything can happen when it's live. Sorry about that. It's okay. We were uh, we were talking about how um, everyone got into paleontology and how, you know, um, how I today found out that I can label myself a paleontologist and how warm fuzzy it makes me feel on the inside. I love that. Um, and then we were just, we just talked about uh, how paleontology is a, a field uh, or a hobby or um, that you just will never, you know, like you could go to the same, you could be doing it for decades, like Ashley said, and you could very probably, you know, go to a, the same site you've been to countless times and find something you've never encountered before. And that's part of the excitement of the field of paleontology. Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, it's, there's two things to this, right? There's fossils that are genuinely rare that you will not encounter every time you go to a site. And then there's fossils you are not uh, able to recognize yet. But after a couple of times, somebody may have shown you how the fossil looks like, then you're able to recognize and find it more often. Uh, so there's, there's multiple ways in which you can really find uh, rare fossils. Of course, it's always going to new sites too. And new sites tend to offer new fossils that have not been described yet sometimes. Uh, and, and you know, in Alabama, there's lots of vegetation uh, in the state, so much of it is covered. But when the soil is uncovered and we, you, you can see sediments and rocks, oftentimes there's lots of fossils to be found. It's what I think you mentioned before, and uh, Adil, when we were talking this morning, how you never truly retire, right? So you never truly 
finished with this hobby because there's always something to find. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exactly right. I mean, the avocational paleontologists and the professional paleontologists as well. I mean, they, they, I see my work as a, as a hobby and I get paid. For, I'm one of the very lucky ones who gets, gets paid for it. Uh, and so I, I, even, even if I get to the age that I can retire, then <laughs> I, I, I will be, uh, We'll be working in the garden only. I surely will be <laughs> possible and uh, as, as best as I can. Well, um, Adio, before I show some of the sites that I want to show to connect everyone to everyone we're talking to, is there any way that we could get one more image of the plaque up on your screen? Do you have it nearby? Absolutely. I'll try to hold it a little bit further away from me. So I think. There it is. What a beautiful plaque. Oh, it's gorgeous. So, um, you know, we talked about how this committee has members of the Natural History Museum that we're at, the um, Alabama Paleontological Society and the Birmingham Paleontological Society. And so I have some um, uh, Facebook pages and websites and stuff that I want to show everyone. Is it okay if I share my screen real quick so we can let people get in contact with all three of these entities? So, okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna go full screen. Sure. All right, so this is the Museum of Natural History's uh, um, website. I couldn't think of that word for a second. Um, I will put a link in uh, the comments to all of these ones that I'm showing you, but if you get to get involved over here, you will find the award information on a page there. You can find all this great information um, that we had talked about today and a list of the recipients right there. <laughs> um, and remember, again, this is going to be a, a yearly thing. Now, um, Ashley, I believe this is your Facebook page. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Um, is this a good way for people to get in contact with you if they want to talk to you some more? That is, absolutely. Great. So make sure you look out for the Alabama Paleontological Society Facebook page. There's lots of great content on there. Oh, look, it's us. And um, <laughs> isn't that like, don't they do that in Spaceballs too, where it's like you're watching yourself on the screen? You guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh, a fantastic movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's a, oh, and I guess our signal got jammed earlier today too. Oh man, so many space, book, space, uh, space balls references. And then if you're interested in the uh, Birmingham Paleontological Society, they have a great website that you can look at um, to get information about them and, uh, you know, learn about what's going on with uh, the Birmingham Paleontological Society as well, which uh, Dr. James Lamb, who wasn't able to join us today, is a member of. So I think that this brings us to um, the close of this presentation. I want to thank you again, everyone, for being here. And one more congratulations with spirit fingers and clapping for uh, Prescott. Yay! Congratulations. Um, Thanks so much. Does anyone have any final thoughts they want to share? Just Great. Fantastic. Um, couldn't have happened to a better guy. Very, very, very well deserved. And I am so glad to see this. Thank you for everything you do, Prescott. And I'd like to echo this. Uh, even though I've been only a year in Alabama, I've seen already so many things that Prescott has been doing over the last year, going to Herald Station on an occasional basis, uh, arranging speakers for the, the Alabama Paper Society. And of course, I've been uh, looking to as what as what has happened in, in the past and Prescott's involvement over the last five decades. I mean, that's... That's an applause in itself. And for me on my side, I haven't really talked very much about it, but Prescott has come to several of our museum expeditions and have been involved in our paleontology expeditions. And we just couldn't ask for, you know, a better uh, person to join us for those. You're always there to help all of our um, our campers and you've got such great knowledge and they get to learn from you. And um, you always find wonderful things. You're like one of those people I need to follow around because I never find things at like Harrow Station on my own. But if I follow you or someone else who is trained better than I am, sometimes I, you know, get to see something neat. <laughs> Good strategy. Follow him. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Follow those. Follow the ones. I always say that the ones who are who have been training and doing this for a lot longer are infused with a little bit of luck or something because they're the ones that you need to follow. Um, or walk in front of him. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, so that should wrap it up for today and for our virtual National Fossil Day. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Again, if you didn't get a chance to watch these videos, you know, or, or you saw this one, but you didn't get a chance to see the ones before it, please make sure to look at all of the archived videos on whatever platform you're watching on right now. They're archived on the uh, YouTube channel and any of the Facebook pages that you're watching on and um, make sure to continue to share your fossil collections with us if you have any using these hashtags National Fossil Day and hashtag my collection and to tag us at UAMNH on um, Twitter or Instagram and then also one last little plug um, we still have spaces available in our chat with a paleontologist tomorrow uh, we are accepting uh, um, scheduling we're scheduling right now so if you are interested in scheduling um conversation with the paleontologist please visit our website um at uh right here there it is um and there's a link to where you can uh sign up for a um a space to speak with a paleontologist. There are a few spaces left. So if that's something you're interested in, now's the time to go ahead and do it. And um, I think that's the last thing I need to plug other than say um, happy National Fossil Day to all of you. Where are my manners? I should have said that before. I'm so sorry. Happy National Fossil Day, everyone. <laughs> um, and uh, I hope that you all enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for being here. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Marcus. It was a lot of fun. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.